Hey everyone, welcome to Electrology. Today, we are diving into the world of generators and exploring a crucial aspect. Stator Earth Fault Protection A generator's stator is the heart of its operation, converting mechanical energy into electrical energy. But what happens if there's a fault in the insulation between the stator winding and the ground? That's where earth fault protection comes in. Today in this video, we discuss these three methods of earth fault protection. 95% stator earth fault, third harmonic under voltage and 20 hertz injection method. To understand these protection methods deeply, first we will understand the basics of a generator. Actually, the stator of the generator is connected in a double star connection method. This means that there are two winding connected parallel in each phase and each phase is connected in star configuration. On the neutral side, there is a neutral grounding transformer through which the neutral is grounded. Now my question is, why is neutral grounded through NGT? If you know, please answer in the comment. Now let's come to the generator. To make the understanding easier, we can consider the parallel winding of each phase into a single one. In the 95% stator earth fault method, the relay continuously monitors the voltage across the resistor connected to the secondary terminal of the NGT. When the voltage exceeds the predetermined value, the relay senses an earth fault occurred in 95% portion of the stator and trips the generator. Let's understand how this logic works. In normal running conditions, the voltage across all three terminals is almost the same, but there must be a small difference. This difference is reflected in the neutral terminal. The NGT steps down this voltage. The voltage across the secondary terminal VN becomes almost 0 to 1 volts. This voltage is much less than the predetermined value, so the relay will not trip the generator. But what will happen if any earth fault happens in any of these winding? Let's see. Look when any earth fault happens, the voltage across the NGT becomes the voltage across the neutral and fault point of the faulty winding. Consider a 660 megawatt generator having an output voltage of 21 kV and the ratio of the NGT is 22 kV by 220 volts. The phase voltage of that generator will be 12.1 kV. If any faults happen on 95% point, then only 5% of generated voltage will come across the NGT which is approx 600 volts. And the secondary will be 6 volts. The relay is set at this voltage and the time setting will be 1 second. That means if the VN becomes 6 volts for 1 second, then the relay will trip the generator. But what will happen if the fault happens at the terminal point? At that time, the voltage across the NGT will become 12.1 kV and the secondary voltage will become 121 volts, which is greater than the predetermined value of 6 volts and the relay will trip the generator. But what will happen if any fault occurs near the neutral terminal, which is outside of the 95% portion? In this context, this protection scheme will not work because if any faults happen near the neutral terminal, the voltage across that portion is very low. For example, 100 volts, then Vn will be 1 volt which is much less than the predetermined value. So relay will not sense any earth fault. Now you may ask, why not we set the relay settings at 0 volts? If we set the settings at 0 volts, then 100% of the winding will be secured. But there is a problem we have discussed earlier that the terminal voltages are not exactly the same. There must be some small unbalance that reflects on the neutral point and for that reason VN have some small value of voltage which may create a false stripping. And that is why we protect only 95% of the winding in this scheme. Next, we will understand how 100% of the winding is protected under third harmonic detection scheme. In India, generators are designed for 50 Hz frequency. In some countries like the USA, generators are designed for 60 Hz frequency. Comment below what is the power frequency of your country. So, no matter how perfectly designed the generator is, there will be some imperfections. Harmonics will be generated because it is the magnetic property. And this disadvantage is taken into advantage here. It can be detected all the time at the generator terminal when an earth fault does not occur. 
the relay always monitors the value of the third harmonic component across the secondary terminal of the NGT. When the value becomes lower than the predetermined value, then the relay senses an earth fault occurred on the generator and trips the generator. Lastly, we will understand the subharmonic injection method. 100% earth fault can also be detected in this method, but it detects earth fault only when the generator is in idle condition. Suppose the generator is not in operation for some days. Before starting the generator, it must be tested. But the first two methods only detect the earth fault when the generator is in operating condition. In this method, we can measure the insulation resistance by pressing a button in the relay. If the value is not satisfactory in shutdown condition, then we can attempt the fault. Let's understand the working principle of this method. Subharmonic frequency means the frequency is less than the fundamental frequency. Here, 20 Hz frequency is injected through a bandpass filter across the secondary terminal of the NGT and a CT is connected to measure the current. Now, the relay knows the value of voltage and current and from these values, it can be easily calculated the value of insulation impedance. That's all for today. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content on electrical engineering. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Stay tuned for more deep dives into the world of electrology. Thanks for watching.